good backup. Thank you, Tomar. Oh. All right, we're recording on OBS, recording with Craig. Cool. Welcome to Psychonauts. Uh, it is about a week or so after the events of A Smile for You. Uh, you guys have had some time to yourselves. No big missions have required any of you. Uh, it's just been some time around the HQ. So, Kaboom, how have you spent your free time? Uh, well, as per, as per probably what is absolutely required of him by Psychonauts at HQ, he has had to take up quote-unquote meditation exercises to try to calm down his anger. Needless to say, though, Psychonauts HQ has to keep, like, a special room, like, blast-proof room for him, just in case it doesn't go so well. Ah. Which is a lot. Oh, oh, kaboom. So, you're in the middle of some meditation when uh, you hear a knock at the door. Ding, ding, ding. Huh? Can I come in? And it's a yeah. it's an agent. Uh, the door opens, and you see an agent who's not from around here, but you know that he's been visiting the HQ for some reason. Uh, I'll show you a picture of this agent. His name is Agent Calavera. He is pretty special, considering he is just a brain piloting what's left of a dead man. And he's not the only psychonaut in that situation, but he is the one without skin. He looks at you and he says, you're the one without skin, right? Or not without a, he's, no, he's like, I'm the one without skin. No, he's, it's you're the one without a, you're the one without a, the, 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 you're the one without a, you're the one that explodes. You're the one that explodes. Yeah. Uh, can I help you? Yeah, uh, we're getting all the agents rounded up for something. Apparently something went really wrong, and uh, Agent... Te Excuse my uh, bad speaking earlier. I'm, like, semi... This is DM talking? Semi out of it. But he's like, yeah, uh, we're getting all the agents gathered. Agent Tether said something's gone really wrong, and he needs everyone at the debriefing room. Uh, okay. Uh, I'll be there in a bit. Does this uh, meditation stuff actually help you? Sometimes. And he sort of darts his eyes over at, like, the scorch marks over on the other side of the wall from the last time. Hmm. You ever try it's smoking? Getting... I'm not allowed near matches. I thought you were a walking one. Well, and also, the doctor advises not to try any narcotics or anything that would impair me in any way. Mm. I think the doctor's kind of stupid. If you want one, just ask. No, thank you. Oh, well, offer's on the table. Anyway, I'll be seeing you there later. Okay. Agent Calavera walks out of the room, uh, leaves you to it. Now, as he walks down the hallway, uh, Pascal, what have you been doing in your free time? Uh, mainly advertising his club and also just kind of, <laughs> pretty much, kind of just chill. He's probably just currently listening to music or better yet. Um, <laughs> Like, if he sees someone, he might be passing her on his card, because he really wants some people to come over tonight, or, like, some other night whenever he's doing some stuff. Yeah, uh, so you're doing that. Uh, Gem, actually. You said Spooky likes to, uh... Well, what does Spooky like to do with, uh, their free time? If he's not... If he's not on a mission, he's fine. He's trying to find ways to either simply just try and spook, 
spook some of his coworkers, have fun, or just find anything to pass the time. I'm gonna say that you pass the room that uh that Pascal is in and see Pascal advertising the club. The spooky immediately starts going, it's like, excuse me, Pascal! He's just like he just turns he's, like, he's like he likes to really exaggerate things so he like swings his arm down and just pauses just I see her do I see this he's just like gesturing at Pascal yeah I'm here do you want a card <laughs> he just gives him a card oh my god thank you <laughs> I mean uh, this is perfect Should... Oh, who's quiet? Am I quiet? Huh? I mean, I can hear you perfectly fine. You are just a little quieter than the others. Hello? There oh, you are. Turn it up a bit. There okay. <laughs> I also... yeah. He gives a like... card and is all like, yeah, I have a club. If you want to come over, it's there. Please. Please do. Yeah. Cool. What's it about? It it's it's a dance club. You know. Ah. Oh. Party? Oh, I Huh. I had never thought about dancing before. So as you're conversing, there's a knock at the door to this, presumably one of the break rooms. And you turn over and you see Agent Calavera. Uh, he was a pretty shocking sight for most new agents who hadn't seen him before, but you guys have been told about Agent Calavera, so you're not too surprised at the skeleton standing in the doorway. You've probably never met him in person, though, so it's still a little bit of a shock. But he's like, hey, agents, yeah? Oh. Yes. Hi. Mm -hmm. You look I good. I knew there was a skeleton walking around, but... Hello. Er yeah, I hopped out of the closet. Anyway, yeah, <laughs> walks over. Be scary. <laughs> walks over, and uh, there's a one of those. Uh, what do they call it? Where you like put out the cigarettes? An ashtray. An ashtray. An ashtray. Why did I forget the word for ashtray? ashtray. Yeah. <laughs> As you know, my brain is garbage. Anyway, there's an ashtray on one of the break tables, and he just puts out his cigarette on it. Uh, he's like. You guys are needed at the debriefing room, uh, the big one, because all the agents are going there. Agent Tethers said something has gone very wrong, and he wants all agents on high alert and all of that. And he does a little eh motion with his hands. You can tell he seems like he's almost like used to Agent Tethers making a big deal out of things. Yeah. Oh. Then I guess it's we have to go. Serious, or is it just? Like, hmm. Okay, then. Also, here. Here's my card. <laughs> oh, thank you. This is gonna Not be... You. He's no, <laughs> no, I want the other card. Give me the second Why? one. Okay, here. I need one for my pet. I have, I have plenty of cards here. Thank you. I'll give one to my fish. Uh, so... <laughs> Agent Calavera takes the card and looks it over, and he looks, like, mildly impressed, like, hmm. Uh, how, what is the caliber of, is it like just a simple printed business card or is there anything special? Cause if there, if not, he's about to suggest, try some of that glitter ink. Oh, <laughs> I, I think it was just like a normal business card. I know he probably made it look pretty nice, but honestly, glitter ink would probably be very nice for that too. So he, I guess he takes that suggestion. <laughs> Yeah, like, Manny Manny says he's got a bit of a he says, I've got a bit of experience with this kind of thing. And he pulls out his own business card. And it is very sleek and professional looking. Black, white, and gold. And that gold is very shimmery. Ooh. Oh, <sighs> I, I shall keep that in mind. Glitter ink. That's hmm. Thank you. You uh notice that the business card on the bottom it lists some of his professions, one of them being like like business owner, like he he 
owned a bar? What? You're, you you want to ask about this, but he's already out the door. <laughs> oh. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I guess we should be getting... We should get go... I guess we should be get... <sighs> we should be going. Yes. Okay. It'll be good. Good to figure out what's happening. I wonder if it's really as serious as apparently it's supposed to be if everybody has to come. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Maybe it's just like, I don't know, there's a really psychic bear outside and they want us to be warm. You think? Hmm. Eh, anything can happen. You do recall that psychic bears are a big problem at some of the summer camps. <laughs> <laughs> but we cut to Torres. You were given by Agent Calavera some new case files on the Baba case. You've probably been poring over them all week. Oh yeah, absolutely. Now, Baylor, I'm gonna say that is it safe to assume that Torres would be calling on Baylor a little more often just to keep an eye on him? Yeah, that'd be a safe bet. So, Baylor, you're bringing some coffee to Torres. Baylor walks over with the coffee and sets it on there like usual. Here you go, sir. And once more, he doesn't even look up from his notes as he's going over everything. Now, <laughs> you're doing this when from behind you, Baylor, you actually hear, Oh, you're a, you're a coffee boy, right? He, he flinches a bit. He's a coffee boy, what? He turns. You turn and you see this person. Oh no, they're cute. Hi, uh, I, I don't like coffee, but do y'all got like so sodas? I need something like big caffeine. There's a, uh, there's some vending machines in the hall. Do you um, need me to get you one? I can't pay you back. I don't get, I haven't been, they ain't paid me yet. They ain't even told me why they called me. I'm gonna be honest. I don't know what the deal is. They, they call me and a couple of other freelancers. Uh, um, well, the, the, they're, they're, I'm not an agent. I'm just like a freelancer, but the other guys are like freelance agents and they're like a, they're, they're a little weird. Uh, one of them got like, Bunny ears. I don't know. Huh. So, uh, if you could, I could, ooh, I know. If there's anything you need done in exchange for a sodi pop, I will do it. I, I am an everyman. I get hired to do all sorts of things. I can fly a plane. I can fix a plane. I can fix your things. I can, uh, I can cook and bake and I can do, uh, I can do a lot. I can farm. I got a lot of experience with them computers. Uh, I'm, I've got, I've got 372 followers on Tumblr. I, uh, have a lot mm -hmm. of, yeah. It's a lot. I'm very experienced. I'll, yeah, I'll just, don't, don't worry about it. It's just one soda. I'll, it's fine. Why, thank you. Oh, and they look at you, Taurus, and they're like, you're that, uh, you're that, you're the guy, the, 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 the Baba, the Baba guy. He finally looks up and he's like, huh? He like tuned out that entire conversation. You're the Baba guy. The guy the guy's obsessed with the Babas. It's oh god. It's not pronounced that way, but yeah. What's it what's it what's it? It's just Baba, you know, Baba. Like sheep. 
Oh, bye. Like a little sheep. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. Why you like Babas so much? No, that's... That's just the case name. Oh, why is the case called Baba? Because that's what the person calls themselves. I don't know. The perp? Oh yeah, the perp. The 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 suspect. The the cr the criminal. The uh, you know the the baddie. You're a uh, you're like. I'm a, sorry. Like... What's your name? Oh, I'm Gruff. Uh huh. Yeah. Who who who's a mute? That's that means I would like your name. Oh, mother, mother, no. I have paused the recording for until you are ready, Finn. I was gonna say, I think Gruff broke him. Gruff just broke Torres. Uh, are you are you are you alive? Are you oh god. Oh God! And then and then and then they look at Baylor like, Oh God! I broke. Oh no! The Babas they got to him. Oh God! The <laughs> Baylor came back with a soda like, Oh God! What did you do? Oh God! I broke. I broke your man person. Uh, he's not a man. Your your police your cool agent guy. Ooh, he looks. Ooh no! I broke you. Oh, no. I broke you. <laughs> oh no! I'm back. No, I'm <laughs> I love Gruff so goddamn much. Okay, I'm back. I'm, I'm recording again. So, yeah, said said who's a mew uh, is where they lived off. They asked for Torres' name. I am Agent Torres. Is that your first name? That's the name that you can know me by. They, they look a little, like, sad, like, oh. <laughs> Oh no, he immediately feels a little regret, but he doesn't say anything. Well, Agent Torres and, uh, the- Oh wait, and then they look around like, Oh, he went to give me a soda, that's right. Where- Ooh. Well, when Not he gets back, I'll ask his name. It happened right in front of you, you didn't hear it? No. He just kind of looks down at the massive amount of notes scattered all over his desk. Wow, you got a lot of notes. Ooh, look at that handwriting. You was good. I can't write that good. Like, I, can, I mean, he I can write them up. I know words. I know words and vocabulary, obviously. I'm very smart, but I just don't got good handwriting. Uh, I'm kind of my big fingers. Up the notes so that they can't read them. What? what? I, wasn't, I was just looking at how you write them, reading them. I, what is this, top secret? Damn. He puts them in his desk. <laughs> you are not that friendly. He tends to be that like that. That one stings a little bit, but he's oh. not. Baylor says as he comes back. Hi. <laughs> I don't have anything I can pay you with right now, but I can give you a hug. He holds the soda out arm length. That That's okay. Thanks, though. They take the soda. All right. What, wait, what was I here? Oh, right. Uh, I came to get this soda, and now I got that, so I think I'm done. And then, uh, as they're about to leave, uh, <laughs> Agent Calavera walks up like, oh, God, they got you in, huh? And Gruff's like, Agent they Calavera! Agent Calavera, I ain't see. oh, my God. I ain't seen you since, oh, what, what HQ was it? What HQ was it? Indiana. Indiana! Oh! I miss these old bones! And uh, Gruff picks him up in like a just a crushing hug and Calavera's like, yes, yes. <sighs> and he gets put down. And Agent Calavera looks at Baylor and looks at Torres and is like, Agents, you're kind of needed in the debriefing room. Oh. oh. All right, clench it, let's go. He's taking the opportunity to run. <laughs> Not like run, run, but like he gets out of there. Baylor's a little flustered, but he follows quickly. All right, bye. 
you know, nice seeing you, meeting you, all that good. Thanks for the soda pop. Uh, just look for your pal Gruff if you ever need anything. I do it for free. I like, yeah. Oh, and tell me about the Bobas when you got more to tell. Yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, see you, bye. And they're waving as you two leave the room. So <laughs> everyone is heading for the big debriefing room. Like, this is the big one. The one that has, like, a stage and, like, a lot of seats. Like, it's it's for practically every agent in this specific HQ to go to. So when you enter, uh, y'all acquaintances all actually see each other. Oh, hey. Oh, hey, it's you guys. Hello. Uh, hi. Oh. Baylor gives a quick wave at Kaboom, still recalling how scary he is. <laughs> Hello, Hello Tara. Guys. How's the meditation going? Uh, fine. I, the scorch mark is a lot smaller. Good, good. That's good to hear. Did did I give you you guys my business cards? Here's my business card. Oh, <laughs> I may have lost mine in my desk somewhere. Uh, well, here have that... another, and have a second one just oh. in case. <laughs> oh, oh, thanks. <laughs> um, thanks. As you guys are receiving these business cards, uh, Pascal, you feel a tap, tap, tap on your shoulder, and. Uh, when you turn around, you see FK standing there with a telekinesis hand open for a card. Oh, hello. Um, well, <laughs> he'll give the card. <laughs> FK, it's the card, and smiles and motions back towards the doorway. And towards the doorway, you actually see Dr. Habit, and you realize FK is implying, I'm getting this card for my friend. Didn't I already- wait, wait. Didn't I already give him a card? Ooh, FK, whatever. Everybody needs FK extra. Gives a little, a little, FK gives like a little sorry smile, like implying like, you you know instantly that they are saying, I think it got taken when he was interrogated. <sighs> okay. Yeah, he's going was... to. Oh, yeah. He's going, to give, <laughs> he's going to give him. They probably would have. <laughs> Wait, shouldn't they have given him his possessions back now? Isn't he like integrated into the organization now or something. FK, Maybe he just dropped the card. FK looks at you and you can feel just he's just too shy to say that he lost it. Oh. Okay. I mean, that's fine. So, everyone's filing like in to this build this uh this room in the building and uh a lot of agents are sitting. You guys take your seats uh, close to each other because you know each other, so why not? Um, Habit is standing in the back with a few other people who like aren't necessarily agents or interns or anything like that, but like, you know, uh, stuff like that. In the back, you also see uh, Agent Calavera standing, and then a couple of people, quote unquote, come up to stand by him. And by people, that's a loose term because they're definitely not human. Uh, one of them's a very big dog. And there is a rabbit riding on his shoulders. You don't know what the fuck that's about. Also, Gruff is up there. <laughs> and uh, you you all don't really have time to take that in as uh, Agent Tethers gets up to the front and claps his hands to get everyone's attention. Like, all right, is everyone here? Mm -hmm. There's like a resounding. Yeah. Of like, yeah, from the crowd, and you know, just like, yeah, we're here, whatever. It was like, okay, good, good. Um, we have an HQ wide emergency, please stay calm. That's the emergency. Pe people remain calm, and he's like, okay. And he motions for one of the other agents on the stage to pull out someone onto the stage, and that someone is. Well, they look like this, but a little less uh, awake. I'm getting a fucking picture. <gasps> this person, but they look brain dead and 
Nelson motions to them and says, as most of you know, this is the local janitor, uh, Weber. Uh, he does a lot of work around here, all that. Uh, he's also dead. The emergency is this, and Nelson pulls Weber's hat off, and you can see where Brain would normally be exposed, there is nothing but an empty head. Oh my. Oh. I forget what that, I forget what that means. That's not good. <laughs> oh yeah, it's definitely not good. It's definitely no, it's definitely not, not good, good, but I forget what it means. So, now, I know a lot of people are probably thinking, oh, he just lost it, which, I mean, that doesn't happen. We all know that doesn't happen. Brains don't just fall out even if there's an opening in the head because they're connected and it's, there's a whole thing. Basically, what I'm saying is someone stole this. They HQ is now on lockdown. Oh. Can find are you it. telling me they took Weber's oh, brain? Why do you... Are you? This is the witch brain people are starting all to, over again. People are starting to uproar in the audience. He's like, "Ah, please calm down, please calm down." And then, while people are uproaring, you hear from the back gunfire into the ceiling, <gasps> and that makes everyone <laughs> shut up. And they all turn and look, <laughs> and it's the rabbit has pulled out a gun and has fired up like, "Hey, shut I your like damn mouth!" And then he gives like a he big thumbs running. up to Nelson and Agent Tethers is like, uh, and a very awkward thumbs up back to the rabbit. Uh, uh I can I get a gun too. Don't like loud noises, not sudden loud noises. Can I get a gun? I no. want a gun too. <laughs> Spooky. So the crowd quiets down and Nelson's just like, we're only on lockdown until we can find it. But I need people to cooperate while we're looking for the brain, uh, because if someone stole this, we need to know if it was just an accident or something stupid, or if it's something as severe as the last time brains were stolen from people's heads. And I'm pretty sure everyone remembers that incident. And uh, everyone in the crowd turns to look at a specific agent, and this agent, uh, he looks very awkward as they all look at him. He kind of shrinks into his seat. Uh, it, you guys know this man uh, as Agent Oleander. Uh, <laughs> like, he, I was here! I was here, you all saw it! Yeah, pretty much. He's just like, <laughs> not, not this time. Everyone's instantly looking at him, and Agent Tenders is like, stop looking at him, stop. We don't just assume things, okay? Just... I assume... <laughs> Nobody asked you! <laughs> exactly. Tethers from the, the stage is like, quiet, 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 please. We, I just wanted every agent to know that people's rooms are probably going to be searched and just, it, look, this could be an emergency or not. So we just need cooperation. Is that okay? Can everyone agree to that? And there's like a very hesitant like resounding sound of okay coming from the uh oh, sorry coming from the agents i need to lower my voice a bit anyway coming from the agents and they um they uh he's got a gun he's got a gun <laughs> I love getting spoken to while I'm recording, so I have to go back and cut that out. I didn't want to have to do video editing. It's fine. So, um, so yeah, they, um, shit, where was I? I? Sorry, family came in. Anyway, he just asks for uh, everyone's cooperation, and there's like a very hesitant sound of okay, sure, whatever, from the agents before they're all dismissed, and you're free to go. Uh, the agents start filing out. Uh, how do you guys respond to this event? Hmm. Who'd want to steal that guy's brain? Like, I don't know, but it's seldom 
a singular instance, so hmm. keep sharp, I guess. Yeah. I mean, what are they going to do? Steal our brains? <laughs> well, you don't yeah, have maybe. anything to worry about, but... Oh, yeah, that's right. Wait, y'all... You guys, you guys aren't... Could they get my brain? Wait. That probably depends. Yeah. Are you actually actively here in the facility? Because maybe, maybe not. Well, I, I mean, my actual I body. Wouldn't, I wouldn't share it? that. I wouldn't share that out loud. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm going to go real quick. And hopefully Whoa. find out where that rabbit got the gun. No. Yes. <laughs> I'm not going to use it. I just, I just want to have one. I don't Torres, let him have a gun. Torres lifts his fan to like no, point a finger. No, it, don't you dare be I'm, rude. It's not even gonna. It's not even gonna be loaded. Just, I just want one. How do you know it's not going to be loaded? I'm the, gonna make sure. Listen, the minute you touch that gun, I'm melting it from your hand. No, no. So long as I get to hold it for a second, no. I really. I'll no. take the chance. No. While you guys are talking, uh, Pascal, you're actually grabbed by the shoulder and whipped around, and you see that the person who did that was the rabbit sitting on the shoulder of the dog, and he's like, you! What? Huh? Me? You look... Oh, wait, you're not him. What? Who? Sorry, you looked a lot like someone that I used to beat up. Uh, please, please don't beat up our agent. Okay. I, the dog, I, the dog squinted yeah, at us like, you know, the resemblance is uncanny. The resemblance to who? Oh, this old vampire we knew. He squints. Ha! <laughs> 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 yeah, he was a loser. Oh, hmm. <laughs> yeah, but he's not around anymore. Oh yeah, he's in hell. <laughs> Oh, that's that's a thing. Okay. Uh hey, Say. Do you have a club sometime? <laughs> they both look at you with that like, "You have a club too?" Man, you really are like him. Like who? <laughs> oh, it's nothing. It's not like you're ever going to meet him. Not until you go to hell. <laughs> not to intrude on the conversation, but can you please put the safety on that gun? Oh, this gun doesn't have safety. What? Where'd you get it? Wouldn't you like to know? Yes, I would. You know, I think the rabbit having a gun seems to be the least interesting thing that happened today. I'm just saying there is a guy with... There's a zombie man with a brain missing. I think, I think we're kind of losing a little bit of the focus here. Mm. Oh yeah, that's why mm. we were called in. We're a bit of uh, experts when it comes to people losing their brains. Yeah, we had to deal with a case like that once. It was horrible. <laughs> oh really? No. Uh huh. Really? Yeah. Um, I would rather not talk about it actually, but well, let's just say our expertise is coming in handy. That's why Agent Tethers contacted us. If you guys find any clues, just make sure you let us know, and we'll take it from there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. I didn't get your names. Oh, I'm Sam. And I'm Max. We're the freelance police. He's doing right, cool. Freelance police. Got it. Does that mean you just like vigilantes or something? Oh, vigilantes is such a uncouth word. Oh, don't say uncouth, Sam. Ew. I mean you guys get the shoot get the shoot guns on your own whims. Oh yeah, Vigilante that's pretty much power. why. That's pretty much why we're freelance police. We get to use guns and solve crimes while committing our own crimes. <laughs> uh, don't, yeah. Don't oh commit any crimes here, please. I want to oh, commit crimes. We get away with it. Yeah. Let me well, commit a crime. Seven Max, if no. you want to If you want to come over, I would be okay with it. <laughs> he just gives them both cards. <laughs> They take it and they're like, huh, hopefully your club's cooler than the other guy's. Yeah, his was pretty dead. <laughs> oh, you crack me up, little buddy. He says this as they leave the room. 
that my club is better than whoever the heck huh. you're talking about. Then you stop comparing me to whoever that is. <laughs> yeah. I bet if I, I bet your like club's just aged league 40 better. years. You look it. Anyway. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, holy spooky, shit. T- spooky <laughs> falls back laughing. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. So, ah! <laughs> you guys uh, are free to now explore and do as you please. Would you like to help solve the case? Yes, sure. But Spooky yeah. just wants to go find a gun. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. He's gonna go and he wants to solve the case. So. I don't quite know how mystery landscape works for Loop, but this session is a little bit something like that, where I'm going to tell you different places you can go in HQ and you can investigate them in whatever order you'd like. Much like a point-and-click adventure. Just go where you want and find the clues. So, there's the main, like, entrance, and then there's stairs up there that lead up to various offices and break rooms. I'm going to limit it to two office rooms and two break rooms. And then there's the higher level with some of the dormitories where people stay. Hmm. I think we should figure out, see if we can't find out where the last place was where, you know, he had his brain. Too bad we can't ask him. In his head? Planchet, don't be a smartass. Well, he is a Janitor, isn't he? Janitor's closet? Janitor closet? I know where that is! And y'all, oh. Gruff is behind you. Torres oh. ages another 40 years. Oh, Hi, hello. Uh, Hi there! This? Ooh, you look fancy! Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Wow, and cute. Oh man. Scal, you've got this. Huh? <laughs> Ooh, them, Pascal. No, stop it. <laughs> yes. Gruff is Gruff is clueless. And I was like, yeah, uh, I was just coming by to say hi because I, re- I saw you got uh you and he, he points at uh Torres and Baylor like y'all and I wanna say thanks again and uh you know all that and see, you know, this is pretty crazy. They called me in because they want me to help find a brain. I guess today I'm a freelance investigator. Uh, but since I'm an investigator, I should get some other investigators to help. So I help you. Uh, I know where the janitor's closet is. Sometimes when when uh, when Weber took a day off, they would get me to be a janitor for a week or so. Oh, that's actually very helpful, actually, because if you know like much about them then this might actually make things much quicker and easier and then we can all hmm yep that is the case cute man (laughs) oh wait a minute let's get get going yeah let's get to that let's get to that janitor's closet well, Let's there's a couple, but I'll brain. take you to the ones I know. So, Gruff leads the way. Let's Very find the brain. brains. So, I need... I need everyone here to roll intelligence if they want to try to recall prior knowledge of cases of brain theft. An intelligence check? Yeah. Give me one. Oh, no. He's got four. <laughs> oh, whoa. Oh, y'all tried. Come on, kaboom. So, Torres. You recall the last, like, big case? There's been small cases here and there, but the biggest case uh, was a case from around 15-ish years ago 
involving a couple of people who, from your knowledge, you know nowadays are reformed agents. Um, they used some kind of concoction to force the brain out of the body. But this brain was already exposed, so you don't know if this case would need something like that to get the brain out. Spooky, you also recall that case, but you also recall a couple of uh, smaller cases, stuff like, uh, again, people using a substance to get the brain out of the body, but again, this is a case where the brain was exposed, just hidden with a hat, so who knows what they really needed to take the brain out. You, uh, you do both recall the names Oleander and Lobato, so maybe if you found those people, they could help? Maybe after we check these closets, we should go find Agent Oleander. Mm, I'd say go for the, uh, the other guy at Lobato. Mm. Torres, do you want to roll intelligence to see how well you know Agent Lobato? Sure. Wait, they actually let that guy be an agent? It's crazy what therapy will do. You said intelligence again, yeah? Yeah. I mean, they let Oleander stay an agent. (laughs) I mean, he had a. Shouldn't he have been tried for, like, crimes or something? Shouldn't Oleander have been tried for crimes? The agency is very forgiving. I don't know, God. Should he he have? Yes, and yet he's still an agent. So, guess what? What are you talking? (laughs) The agency is very forgiving. They forgive brains. The agency. We'll give anyway, people who are unsound of mind. Uh, so actually, I'll explain this. I'll explain this through Torres. Actually, Torres, you know that the agency has a habit of when certain criminals are found to be unsound of mind for their actions, rather than fully malicious, the agency will often offer bargains or deals to those people, ways to get uh, new psychic talent out of those who once committed crimes as a way to get them out of having to serve proper jail time or other things. This is a government uh, place, after all. They can swing that kind of thing as long as they go through the proper hoops to make sure it works out. You know that Lobato is one of the biggest cases of them pulling those strings because uh, you've met the guy and he's... Oh, he's oh, he's he makes a me thing. age forty uh, years every time I have to talk a... to him. Wow, you're really old. Yeah, he's a little bit of a weirdo. He, uh, you know, he was an ex dentist. You know, uh, he is very smart, actually, like genuinely a very smart person. But he's very scatterbrained, strange. So not twitchy. unlike Moosh. He. Yeah, but, like, a little mm. scarier. What is with crazy people and friggin' dentistry? I don't know. It must have just been a hobby. Something. I still I still say Lovato. He's fun. Oh, you're probably right. We should probably talk to the both of them, then. Yeah. Now, at this point, Gruff takes you up to one of the janitor closets and opens it, and you can see all the cleaning supplies inside and all that. And they're like, well, here you go. Uh, extra strong supplies are on the top shelf, and there's some gum scrapers over here. We need those with Agent Tethers around, so they got a bunch of them. Oh, uh, he doesn't still have that thing, does he? With the gum. Oh, he does that all the time. There's like oh. a te- there's a tethers economy about people who can try to like trap him by setting up gum and seeing if he'll take it. They place bets. Are you- I heard what? one agent captured him like you- by setting up one of those like traps where you like put the food under the box, but it was the gum. Box? Oh my god. Torres ages <laughs> another five years. Spooky's like <laughs> I- spooky like visibly shakes away just like the untapped potential. Yeah, you didn't no. know about this? This he, has been he points no. right at Spooky. No. Oh my Don't God. even think about it. No. Yes. No. Yes. This is going to be perfect. I'll get, oh, I'll get well, a water balloon. 
it, it's been going on for like uh well tethers joined the agency about a year or so after that whole thing where they started taking on kid prodigies like the that one that one agent uh aqua boy uh so like uh, since like 2006 or 7 so it's been going on for a fair while oh, <sighs> Yeah, it's pretty wild, huh? <laughs> anyway, uh, you guys can investigate this closet to your heart's content. I'm gonna go to that. So you should roll me intelligence or finesse. <laughs> They're the same for Pascal, so I'm just gonna roll I... intelligence again. Hey. Spooky is not doing anything. He's just looking. Like, just standing. He's just standing there menacingly. He's, like, standing and planning out using gum just so he can spook tethers. They look like... same role. Ooh! Pascal. A smart cookie. To those who got one six, you don't see anything too out of the ordinary, except this place is a little not organized well. Uh, how, uh, however, Pascal, you do notice one odd thing, and it's cat hair. Or you think cat hair? It's too small to be like normal human hairs. It's, it's hairs of some animal. But it looks mostly like cat hair. Uh, on one of the shelves, it looks like. Just a few strands here and there. He goes over and, like, like picks out one of the, ha- the strands, and he's like, is that cat hair? Who owns cat, cat hair? Cat hair. Did- Do we have any psychic cats? Not that um, I know of. No, I think we just got the rabbit and the dog. Could could the could the rabbit have brought in a cat? Is it I don't know. That, uh, Hold on. What color's the cat hair? It's black. See, I think he brought in. A, I think he brought a cat in and, and just let it go wild. Ah. Uh, don't think that's it. Dang. Shoot, I thought I was getting somewhere. Why would there be... I don't know why there'd be cat hair, actually. Outside of psychic animals, I think animals being allowed in here is banned, except for, like, pet visit days. Does... Did our... Did Jander have a pet cat, then? I, I don't... Well, I we, Weber didn't talk to me. Weber said I was um, an aggravation, quite unlike any he had ever met. Huh. Well, that's quite rude. I don't know. Yeah, that's he mean. don't he don't like people because people act real mean to him on account of him being dead. I heard that there was this one cowboy. That used to give him shit, like, why are you dead? And he would be like, dude, what? I, I'm, why are you asking why someone can't who died he be why dead? you're dead? Yeah, like, ooh. that's cool. I mean, I don't You're know. living don't after know. you died. You got, you got an extra life, like. Yeah, he, he don't seem too happy about it. Oh. Hmm. I think it's on account of he can't eat or, like, sleep or get other things. Oh, without those, without sleep, yeah. Well, that's sad. I mean, all right. Um, not to be insensitive and change the topic purposely, but are there any other janitor closets anywhere nearby? Uh, well, there's one across the way. We could head towards it and see if we could find anyone else we should like talk to or. Let's do that. Let's do that. <laughs> All right, I'll lead the way. 
let's go. And Gruff, once again, takes off. Spooky charges oh boy. with them. Spooky charges over with them. This is a very investigation-heavy session, so I need people to roll me intelligence or finesse to see if you notice anything particular while heading along with Gruff. Also, I feel I should clarify, Gruff's full name is Gruff McGruff. <laughs> oh, my oh my god, I love him. Them. They go by he and they. Okay. Aw, Baylor. Spookies was finesse. Not paying attention. All these dice and no brain. <laughs> Pascal's no, gonna freaking instead. No thoughts head empty. He's he's going to instead actually start talking to uh Grump and giving Grump his business card because he got distracted thinking about, oh yeah, I haven't given this person it yet. Here. Gruff takes the business card. <laughs> oh, my That's name's Gruff. Cool. I'm Gruff McGruff. I'm a freelancer. Ooh, freelance. <laughs> yes, they hire me to do all sorts of things. Because on account of my brain being all psychic, but my skills are being very varied. They thought I wouldn't make too good an agent since my skills are all over the place. So instead, I'm freelance. I'm free of the man, but I can help him if he pays me nice. Honestly, that kind of sounds kind of fun. Oh, it is. I get to make friends at all different HQs, and I get to fly planes, and sometimes I run cafeterias, and it's real nice. I really like when I get hired to be a camp counselor for a summer. That's a real nice time, except when the kids are mean. Because sometimes kids are little bitches, but most of the time they're nice. <laughs> Agreed. You know, you remind me of one kid who also had a knack for long conversations. Oh, yeah? Oh, shoot. I knew this one kid, and he would like know. to tell stories all the time. He would tell all about his family and his pet dog and his pet cat and his cousins and the story of this one time he got caught on a plane and this one time that his friends cheated at hide and seek and all these different little episodes he liked of this one Western show that his friend <laughs> made him watch and all these other things. You know, he had a lot to say. And I would always listen because that's the polite thing to do. And I thought, hey, this is interesting. He's got so much to say. And sometimes I would tell him stories back about how they would hire me to do things. Like this one time I got the plane that I was flying hijacked by the agents I was flying it for. And this one time I got a real nice oh, burger from this diner in this one town. And this one time I heard this radio station in my head. Uh, and this one okay. time... Um. I'm, I'm, yeah. going, I'm going to need you to just, okay, I'm sure this is all very interesting, but I cannot right now. So save it for later, and let's continue with the investigation, shall we? I was very interested in what they had to say, but okay. Can we? Oh, well, I can talk to you I later actually... in person. I can, I'll go to your club uh, we could talk at your club oh, no. and maybe shake a leg. I know how to do the tango. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so, uh, Torres, you got <laughs> Torres, you got a six. Aged 30 years throughout <laughs> all that. Kaboom. Kaboom. Look, he was guy. disassociating to Helen back. <laughs> Look, Kaboom is trying, all right. Spooky I noticed, almost, and I'm very proud. Spooky almost disassociated back into his body. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like... <sighs> so, so, Spooky, while you were disassociating, you were keeping your eye out for shit to, like, investigate while you were going to the other, uh, the other closet. You looked inside one of the windows to one of the break rooms, and you can very actively see... 
two agents getting bitched out by another agent, and you recognize those two agents as Oleander and Lobato, actually. Uh, Torres, you are aging at a rate which should not be human. <laughs> you are reaching your thousands in terms of years. You are wrinkling and graying at just the fact- My hair's just falling out. <laughs> Gruff, just You're a skeleton. talking. Uh, so you are just trying very hard not to lose your fucking mind. And while one of the ways you're doing that is by paying attention to literally anything fucking else. And while you're looking around, uh, you... You don't see something, but you do hear something. You hear... It's very quiet, super easy to miss, especially with the drawling on of uh, Gruff's talking, but you do hear. And kaboom, you hear it too. Huh? So, did you just hear that too? That sounds like a cat to you? I think so. What y'all yeah, what, what hear? Can we roll to see one? if we can tell what direction it came from? Mmm. Mmm. Is that also going to be intelligence? Intelligence, or if you want to psychically connect to it, extent. <gasps> Torres has clairvoyance. Clair Ooh, clairvoyance. Yeah, use an act. Clairvoyance. Try to connect to the cat. Use your extent. <laughs> You've done it! So you reach your mind out, and after a moment, you start seeing through the eyes of that cat. You see vents. You're inside the vents of the building. Oh god, it's in the vents. <laughs> it is crawling around. You follow it crawling around until it reaches a grate, and it, like, paws at it, and goes, <laughs> and... Through the grate, you see someone peek in and go, oh, shit, and uh, open the grate to try and get to the cat. And that is when you come back to yourself. Did I recognize who the person was? Should I roll for that? Yeah. That's intelligence to see if you can recall. <laughs> nope, they failed me. You, uh, you, you don't pay attention to many of the people in the agency, if you're honest, because you're too busy with your case and you don't really give a shit about half the people except for, like, Baylor. So, <laughs> uh, you don't recognize the agent. All right, well... The cat was in the vent. Somebody took it out of the vent through one of the grates. But since we heard it at all, it should at least be somewhere nearby. We should try and figure out where it is. Hmm. Should we spread out? Well, pets just aren't allowed in here, first of all. But seeing as we found cat hair in the closet, if we find this cat, we could probably find some more clues. Hmm. That seems very likely. Yes, we can we can go to the cat or um over there. Over where? Like, like, point, over where? Point through the window where he see where he's seeing like Oleander and Lobato just like I mean they're right there. Wait. Oh, well I guess we can talk to them since they're already there. Torres, you don't sound happy about that. He doesn't want to talk to Lovato. He really doesn't. It's okay. He's already it's aged okay. so much. It's okay. Just talk to Oleander. I'll deal with him. I like him. <sighs> Are you gonna go in? Yeah, let's go talk Spooky's, to him. <laughs> Spooky's already opened the door for everyone. You see an agent uh 
like talking to them both like I cannot believe you would and then Lobato's chiming in like you're not listening I'm not responsible for this one I was right here he was right here and he sounds very miffed like I am not the only person with interest in stealing people's brains. So you still have interest. Listen. I was in a dark place. And he very dramatically grips his chest like, it was a bad time. Aww. Tricky just... Pascal's raising an eyebrow as he's walking in. Like, What's going like... on in here? Yeah, what's I'm happening? Tr- I'm trying to get them to confess. Confess to what, exactly? But who the hell else would be responsible for a brain getting stolen in HQ except for the two people with a history of stealing brains? Aside from that, do you have any evidence? Look at them. And he motions to Lobato, and Lobato looks visibly disgusted at the implication of, like, what is that supposed to mean? And Oleander's just like, ah. he's groaning into his hands like, it's been years, can I'm... people please let me move on? We I get mean... it, we get it. We had a brain-stealing phase, okay? Is that so bad? Yes! Yes, it was criminal! You were criminals! It, it happened. has been it years. Happened and it's over now. If you do not have any evidence, I suggest you go try and find some, and then come back. Yeah, we'll deal with them. The agent points at Lobato's robotic arm and is like, twist it. And Lobato's like, what? And he twists the arm, and sure enough, nothing comes out. And then the agent squints, and it's just like, <laughs> and storms off. Hmm. Spooky immediately, like, turns on a time, it's like, so, aside from this, how's your day been? Oh, well, you know, I saw an old friend today, which is pretty weird and interesting, but hey, it looks like he's gonna be staying. Oh, really? Who? Yeah, Boris. Boris? Dr. Habit. We went to the same dental practice. Oh, of course you did. That explains a lot. Huh. Don't be rude. I'm not being rude. I'm not being rude yes, at all. Yes, you are. Just... That was very rude. How is that rude? That's really cool. I'm glad Horace you have gives a him a look. I was just stating the obvious. It's yep. nice to know. He Guys. points at him. What? Watch it. Guys. Um. He crosses his arms. So... Okay, as fun as that is... With whatever you're doing, I think maybe we should do the relevant thing that we were supposed to do here. Right, more questioning, isn't it? I mean, yeah, more than likely. Less accusat, like uh, less of, less accusing. It's less yes. accusatory, but more in the vein of we need to ask you, who've had, who have obviously experience. had experience with doing this about how someone could have. The only evidence we have so far is cat hair. That's it. What yeah, the noise is that is. Cat hair, what? And Lobato, uh, Lobato just kind of chimes in like, oh, yeah, that would make sense. And Oleander's like, how the hell does that make sense? Oh. He's like, no way, oh. he's on to something. Listen, Chorus listen. takes out his notepad. <laughs> Lobato uh, kind of like pats Oleander on the head like a little army man here never had much experience with the science of things. That was my department. It's why we worked together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you get on with it? Ah. Oh, right. Well, my biggest way of getting the brain out of the body was through sneezing. I used something that could make anyone sneeze, which of course is pepper, but well, Allergies are a thing. So you just Wait, be able to sneeze your brain that, out? Wow. So you're that suggesting the that, the, that the janitor possibly had a, like, a... Sabotage? A well, that's the only thing I can think of, how cat hair would make someone get their brain out. Maybe the cat slapped it out. He is, un- he is no, dead. No, 
Oh my god. That's just that's not how any of that works. Yeah, but no. I know the it. science of this. I mean I mean that, granted, I have not is, been in a physical body for like a year now. I forget. Where the hell even is your body? Again, I wouldn't share that out loud. Don't ask questions you're not prepared to hear the answers of. Okay, I really don't care now. Yeah. Anywho, so was this janitor allergic to cats? Does anyone else How remember? I know? Uh, well, I, wasn't his brain exposed? Couldn't they just it pull it out? Yeah, oh, no, 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 no. Loosen it? Weren't you listening to Agent Tethers? You can't actually just pull it out. You would need to, like, scalpel it out. You'd need a very strong grip to actually pull a brain out. So it has You'd to be risk someone really it on strong. The way out. And really, really, yes. like, really strong and really uh, dexterous to do Just, it. The only way I can imagine being able to pull a brain out with brute strength, you would probably grip it so hard that on the way out it would just pop like a water balloon. <laughs> Okay. Ew. Well, you two oh, obviously have a history with the organization. So, do you know anyone who would have any sort of ill will towards the janitor? Who didn't? He was kind of a. Well, not to be rude. He didn't have a good attitude. I mean. I mean, I'm not one to talk, but okay. I didn't know him well. He just called me crazy one time. And I said, of course I am. What's your point? Ha! Ah, no. Um, hmm. You trying to think. I don't know anyone really well except for those who uh, bother to spend time with me. You know, like Ollie here. So... Mm. Alright. And you two can corroborate that you've been here the entire time. Yes. We oh. even have security camera footage of us in the break room. Okay. I'm cool. not being... We just have to keep this written down. It's fine. You haven't seen a cat anywhere by chance, have you? Cat? No. I wouldn't know if there was a cat around. I... I'm bitter that they won't let me bring my rabbits in unless it's a special day. So if anyone was bringing their own pets in, I'd get very mad about it. Well, you I am very sorry to say it, there was a cat in the vents, and we're trying to find the person that took it out of the vents what? just now. God! Go. Oh, he's frustrated. He's frustrated. Wait. Really? After all, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Back to that one detail. In here. Back on that one detail. You have a rabbit? I have a few rabbits. That is very awesome. Wait. Torres, you have clairvoyance, don't you? Yeah. Couldn't you pluck one of the cat hairs and use it to see through the cat's eyes? I mean, I can try it again. I don't know if they're still within range. Wait. That's the problem. The person took the cat out of the vent. It could be it anywhere now. You should still be able to do it if you have a piece of the hair. It doesn't matter the distance. That is true. Distance only matters when you're connecting to the entity itself, not to a part of it. Well, we can try. Yeah, give it a shot. Who's got the hair? I do. <laughs> I have my hair, which is admittedly nothing. I don't want your hair. I want the cat's hair. Pascal made a weird I, face that. He, he puts, <laughs> Spooky puts a hand. Hair. Spooky puts a hand to his chest like, I thought what we had was special. Pascal. Am I rolling? Am I, am I rolling another extent? Yes. And you're I, using an I, act to do it. Also, Pascal looks at the other two and is like, hey, do you two like dancing? You guys probably like dancing. Oh, <laughs> I love dancing. I get jiggy with it every now and then. You should see oh me God. when I had my afro. Oh. You had an afro. <laughs> Oleander is just kind of like, yeah, I like to get down every now and then. He's oh my God, these the guys are amazing. <laughs> these guys they are take amazing. The cards. They take the cards and Lovato's like, oh. 
Holy! And Oleander's just like, yes, Cal, we can go. Hmm. Pasco seems happy with this. <laughs> Don't say that Oleander dances like an egg. <laughs> That's rude. His legs him, are so short. Let, he can only pop up do, and down. Let him dance like an egg. But he is he not an egg. You know what I mean? Oleander also uh, asks, do you have a karaoke? <gasps> do we have karaoke? Pasco? Yes. Yes, I do. <gasps> He's ready. Oleander is ready. <laughs> Spooky's non non-existent eyes are wide. <laughs> so I want to sing. You are connecting to the cat as they're doing this, Torres. Uh you see the cat is being held by someone. They're not looking at the person, they're looking like at the arms. You see, this person is very hurried. I need you to roll me intelligence to see if you can notice any landmarks that would tell you where in the HQ that this person is. <laughs> you notice a back door that you recognize as being a door that leads to some of the back storage rooms from the cafeteria area. Oh, they're going to the storage rooms. Let's go. Oh, storage. Nice. Ooh, let's go. Let's... Agent Solander, Lovato, thank you for talking to us. We have to go. Sure, See no problem. Thanks for not being mean. See you at the dance club. I'll see you when we get down! And Lovato yeah. does a split. <laughs> oh, oh, hey, okay, let's fist bumps. go. Fookie <laughs> fist bumps just... Okay. Yes! Oh, uh, <laughs> Okay. Uh, Torres is the first fun. one out of the room. It's <laughs> fun. <laughs> Pasco freaking claps before he runs after Torres. Like, oh wait, he's gone. Oh shit, Pas we gotta go. Pasco, remind I'm, me when the date I'm is. I'm going. I'm going. <laughs> I have a question. Uh huh. Baylor, how have you been during all of this? <laughs> he's just been kind of. Uh, <laughs> A little, like, overwhelmed. He's not used to dealing with this many high-energy agents. He's usually, you know, just doing, getting coffee and copying papers and sitting around crocheting. <laughs> He's probably not, never in person met ha half these people. Well, now he has. He has met Agents Oleander at Lobato. And standing outside waiting for you guys is Gruff. Uh, Gruff's like, hey, it looked like it was going to get crowded in there if I followed you in. Did you get anything useful? Gruff, do you know where the storage rooms are? Oh, yeah. They're they're, uh, there's there's a door in the back of the cafeteria that leads to them. Uh, wait, I just gotten... Ooh, 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 ooh. I need to roll intelligence for Gruff to see if they get an idea. Oh boy. <laughs> Don't hurt yourself too much there. <laughs> Don't be mean. You've they have the life. biggest ideas. Gruff is actually very smart. Don't be rude. Yeah. So Gruff <laughs> Gruff uh, with the three sixes like, give me some of that cat hair. I got an idea. Okay. <laughs> uh Tell me, what is the best way to sniff out a cat? I uh, couldn't tell you. I don't own a cat. With uh, a dog? Yeah! And they point at Baylor like, You's got a good brain in there! You got the thinking cap on! I like your thinking cap there with the little Ouija bar th The Yeah, you got, you got a good brain. There was a dog who offered to help us with the investigation. Let's give him some cat hair and have him sniff it out. Yes. Sam, right. God, where even would they be? The dog and the gun rabbit. Sam and oh, Max. God, that was rabbit. their names. Yes, Do Max, not the call gun them rabbit. dog and gun rabbit. I will call him Max the gun rabbit. 
I'll, I'll go get uh, you guys do whatever your plan was. I'm going to run off and try to find them with this cat hair. Hmm. Oh, all right. Okay. Uh, Lord, speed, my friend. <laughs> the person with the cat was in a rush, so we should probably head to the storage rooms, like, right now. Yeah, okay. right. let's, Good let's luck. Going. It's and time. Gruff turns and runs the other way. So we should really get moving, right? Pascal's That's what you said? Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Sliding on over Everyone with him. roll me a speed. Okay, let's go. <laughs> oh, spooky. What did I put? Oh. Oh. Spooky, you did. Spooky, spooky does his spooky go slide <laughs> forward. <laughs> spooky does a spooky slide. <gasps> Literally everybody but Torres and Baylor. Oh no. So everyone else runs ahead. They knew they go fucking fat. I'm fast as fuck, boy. So y'all. <laughs> y'all are heading to the camp. Baylor probably tripped. Yeah, Baylor trips, and Torres, being the fatherly figure you are, you stop to help Baylor up. Uh, you can have that little interaction if you'd like. <laughs> My fucking nose! <laughs> oh, you, you okay? Yeah, I'll be fine. It just stings. You're not bleeding? No? You're not dying? <laughs> he paps at his nose, blinking rapidly. No! No, it's fine. All right, let's go. Let's go catch up to the others. You look up right. and they're gone. Oh. Oh, God damn it. Oh, well, let's go. To the cafeteria, yes, you guys head. Now, everyone else. So everyone but Baylor and Torres. You make it to the cafeteria and you see that door to the back storage. Uh, Y'all run in. Y'all run in. Okay. So y'all enter and you see a lot of like stacked up boxes, probably full of things like case files, uh, equipment, stuff like that. The boxes are all labeled with different things. Uh, it's a pretty big room. Roll me intelligence or finesse to investigate the room. Oh, God. Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. Ha ha! I know everything. You got a brain in that noggin? <laughs> there is no he head underneath my hat. Only the brain. No thoughts, head empty. Uh, so you all <laughs> did a pretty good job investigating. Uh, you don't notice anything that looks out of place, but what you notice is that the room is cold. The room is very chilly comparatively to the room outside. Hmm. And if you follow the cold, you realize it gets colder the farther into the right back corner you move while you're looking around the room. Oh, huh. You all feel that, right? Does someone have a freezer in here? Man, if I wasn't blue already, I might be. Pascal walks towards that uh, where it's where it's getting colder. Kaboom! Walks to where it gets colder. Spooky follows them both at a reasonable distance. So you guys are heading that way uh, when you hear. Hmm? And you see a little bit near you guys, about like a, a couple feet away to your right, uh, that was hiding behind one of the boxes, a very adult cat with like a mangled ear. And it's looking at you and it's hissing. Oh, oh, little... Pascal, let, okay. let me see okay. if I can help it. Let me see if we can calm it down. Don't worry, don't worry. We're, we're not here to hurt you. How do you want to yeah. calm this thing? Uh, 
Pookie just wants to very slowly approach <laughs> and, and try hey, to hey, um, Baylor, what well, the you? He's, not, he's gone. Baylor's not here. He's not here yet. Baylor, where is Baylor? Y'all look around and you realize Baylor and Torres were left behind. Oh okay. no, we forgot. Who's that. a? Does anyone else know that sleep stuff? Ah uh, no. No, nope. I'm not. I good. I specialize in being like a ghost. So now. I mean, it's not that hard to calm down a cat, is it? Yeah, we just give him a little pet and maybe give it a treat. Do you have a track? Do you have a cat treat? Okay. Uh... Here, let me. I'll see if I can. Kaboom is going to try to calm the cat. <gasps> with like. Kaboom, I don't think that you should do it. Yeah, wait, may, maybe. Wait, wait, no, let him do what he wants. Let him do what he wants. What are you. Okay, so you want to try to calm it? How are you going to try? Like an empathy. Would that empathy check be like to an like shoot it? empathy check would be an empathy or a speech or a speak rather would be what you need to calm it. Okay. I'll try that. I believe in you. Oh god. I, I, I feel like this is going to go bad. <laughs> he took you very quietly. He's like, I believe in you from a safe distance. Pascal is obviously worried. <laughs> <laughs> You... Nope. Luck point. Oh. <laughs> oh wait. Do I have luck? Oh, I should There's have luck no points. Luck... There's no luck points oh. in Psychonauts. There oh. is, there is though. We decided to call it a migraine, where you can get succeed at the cost of something negative happening. Would you like a migraine? Sure. Oh God. <laughs> Curious. So, you uh you. Do uh, reach this cat at first. It sees your hand approaching and starts going <laughs> like <laughs> the cat's fucking like. <laughs> but you touch it okay. and it doesn't um, attack. It doesn't attack. You touch its head very gently, and the cat's like, mm. you know, when cats like have very wide eyes and they look woke as fuck. That's what this cat looks like. <laughs> uh, but it lets you pet it and stops hissing. But as you do that, you feel something touch your leg. And when you look down, you realize like three other cats have walked over and are rubbing themselves on your legs. Would you say that Kaboom is naturally kind of warm due to his, uh, you know? Yeah. Yeah, they're sapping the warmth. Like they, they, like this cat realized you're a heater and all these other cats seem to have suddenly realized it. And now you're being swarmed by like four cats. That's a lot of cats. Huh, Where are these cats coming from? I am not okay. Uh, uh, I'm not used to so many. Okay, um, what do I do? Uh, I don't know. Just be. Which one of do them I just, has black fur? Do I just let them? I I mean, just don't don't do anything drastic, please. Yeah, they might just lay if, down. And... Are you still petting that one cat? He sure is. Okay, good. Because if you tried to take your hand away, the cat would literally try to like hiss at you if you tried to stop petting it. This okay, cat which cat? Attention. I see keep. Do our cats have. Which cat has black fur? We need to take it. None of the cats have black fur. One of the one that yeah. you're petting, Kaboom, has like spotted fur. Like it's like white with like orange patches. One of them's just a solid white cat. One of them is black and white, but like the black is only in tiny spots. So it looks almost like a Dalmatian. <laughs> but there's a cat. The other one is just solid orange. Part do do it so none of these are the cats that we're looking for. I mean, they're not the cat that that Torres was talking about, but they certainly, um, they certainly are cats. There's not supposed to be cats here. Pascal. Yeah. I think we need to find out where the cats came. We need to find out where those ones came in from i think it like points to the ones at kaboom's feet just like because i think they because it looks like they just popped out of nowhere honestly hey so this is the point where torres and baylor finally make it into the room you do feel the cold in this room uh but you don't see the others however the second you two enter 
I need Torres and Baylor to roll speed. Oh no. No. <gasps> you both manage to sidestep out of the way the second you feel it growing colder where you are. And you step out of the way just in time to see that right where you were standing, ice has formed. You are going to be frozen in place. Jesus. Now, one of the cats that was messing with you, Kaboom, the one you were petting... It perks up and looks back at, like, the entrance of the room and hisses. Uh. Whoa. It is growing colder where you guys are and the cats start dispersing around the room. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, uh, Maybe we should... Move? I think yeah. we gotta try and heat this. So, I was so gonna say try and heat it up, but I can do that. Oh. Okay, so kaboom! So kaboom is gonna use a little bit of his pyrokinesis to sort of heat up the room. Roll me extent. Okay. Six. Okay. Uh, uh, oh. All right, so you do it pretty well. Uh, the room is starting to heat up a bit. Uh, but also, you know how when you like mix heat with cold, it makes some fog? Yeah. Yep. The room is actually getting a little bit foggy. Not too bad, but there's like legitimate some fog in the room now. But uh, it's not so cold uh, anymore. That's really cool. Okay. Whoever it is, come out. I'm starting to get ticked off now. That's all the m more reason not to c come out. Well, I mean... Hello? You it hear the be... voice from above, but you can't see where it's coming from. Ah, uh, I mean, you sound like you're kind of freezing. It might be for your betterment to come down. That's just how, how I am. Are you okay? Hmm. Do you need help? I need you to get out and don't tell anyone what you, what you, what you saw. I mean, and what if I come up there? Happen, sir. If you need or, help, if you just come out, we can help you. I don't don't want you to take 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 them. They they don't have anywhere else to, to go. Uh, We're not interested yeah? in your cats. We're more interested in what? Well, hmm. We're looking for for someone who sh who straight up stole a brain. Yaru wants to do something. Oh, what would Yaru like to do? Okay, no, you're oh, in okay. the same room. Yeah, Torres and uh, you were just Baylor in the, in the you were in the entrance while the others were at the far end, so you didn't see each other because there's a lot of piles of boxes in this room. Sorry. Could could um. So, what are you doing, could Spooky? Could Spooky use? his levitation to try and go up and look for the person? Sure, roll extent. <laughs> Please, God, spooky. Huh? You try to use levitation to bounce up so that you can get a better look, but you kind of just misjudge how high you should jump and smash your head into the ceiling. Heck! <laughs> oh, shit. Eh. Spooky, that's are you okay? I don't think that's ever happened before. 
Okay. If you're not going to come out, then I hope you enjoy saunas. Uh, no, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. You'll hurt the... You'll hurt the... The... the, the you'll... Yeah. You'll... Hurt the cats? Uh, then what if out. I, I could just take the cats out outside and you guys could talk. Uh, at that... Uh, Torres and the Baylor, you glance behind you and realize the door has been frozen shut. <laughs> cool. But we're not getting out of here. I mean, why not? I'll c come out if you s stop heating it up. It uh, kind of hurt hurts. But yeah. Okay. Okay. For every moment that you don't bother to come out, I'm turning it one degree okay. hotter. Kaboom, Kaboom, stop it. Listen. No, now I'm getting agreed. He just agreed. Or whoever this yeah, is. Yeah, what's this guy? Just agreed to come out Give them as, the soon, as soon as you turn it down. So please turn it down. It's not like you can't turn it up again. Exactly. Fine. Kaboom, heat's Thank down. You. From one of the big piles of boxes, a head pokes out from the very top of it. You Hello. see this person poking their head out. Hey! Oh. Hi! Hiya! I like your scarf. I, um... I, 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 I need, um... The... I don't... She didn't mean to. Who didn't mean to? <laughs> and you see poke out their head from the scarf. A little black kitten. Ah. Oh. Oh. Wait, but where's... If... Your right. cat took the Look. brain, didn't it? No, 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 dude, she didn't. She didn't take anything. I think she's re 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 responsible, but I, I'll, I'll, I'll t um, I, oh, I, 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 went, I, I went, I went to to find her, um, in the in the closet, and I saw the brain on the ground, and I, she went into the vents, so I, I chased, I chased her. But okay, well, where's the brain then? What closet? I don't. I don't remember, but when I the the brain was gone when I went when I went back. Oh, okay. okay. All right. So well, somebody else took the brain. But this was an accident. Yes. yes. All right. Okay. okay. See you now well, we're figuring kind of things way. out. We're teamwork. Okay. Okay. We won't tell anything about these cats. I mean, it's clear that you're trying your best to take care of them. Yeah, they look as they they don't have anywhere else t to go. So I they look very polite. I, I, they they live in some of some of the unused boxes, and I I give them f food. Aww. They look very polite. I I love them. Some of them are kind of mean, but the, they're they're just they're just scared. Yeah, which is understandable. Mm-hmm. I um. He kind of shies away, but he's like, "I'm. I don't. Um. I don't like pe pe people. Um. Are you? Are you d done? Can I mean, you remove the ice from the door? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'll. I'll get rid of it. And the uh, the ice just kind of dissipates. Kind no. of turns into a mist. Yeah, thank almost. you. Yeah, thanks. I know you just said that you don't like people, but if you ever wanted to just, I don't know, hang out or something, here. I don't, oh. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like, like to, no, I don't like to, I don't, I, I, um, I, did, okay. I just, okay. I just like to spend time with my, with my cats. You stay with just, your cats, uh, then. Just show us where the brain is, if you can, or at least remember where you last saw it. 
it, I saw it in that closet. I, I, I left it behind because I needed to chase the cat down and I wasn't thinking, but when I came back, it was gone. And then, then she, she, she snuck into the vents again. And, uh, I, um, I don't know who took it. Um, um, who was around, who was around. And you can see him very clearly trying to think of who was around the closet at that time. All right, just calm down. Take your time thinking yeah. about it. I'm calm. I'm just c- cold. I mean, <laughs> Kaboom gets an idea. He grabs the guy by the shoulders and starts warming him up very gently, but not hard. Uh, um, well, that's. Kind, kind of nice. Um. Okay. Um. My therapist said that sometimes it's good to take a few breaths if you want to think straight. He nods and takes a couple deep breaths, and I think. I think I saw I saw that one person, the the freelance person. They hired uh, them the other day for um, transportation and storage, and hey, then that gruff guy. That's their name. I yeah, think we need to go talk out. to Gruff. All right. <laughs> we should get to look for it. Um, what was your name again? It's Avery. Yeah, Agent Arland. Um, Avery. Oh, like your name. Well, thank you, Agent Avery. Uh, thank, thank you for the warmth i haven't i haven't felt this warm in a long time uh well i guess if you need it you can ask i don't know i mean or not i'm used to people not being near me my my um my my cats like you so if you wanted to to visit, um, just keep them secret. We won't tell you anybody about the cats. Yeah. Th- thank thank you. All right, let's find the little pilot. <laughs> let's get this. Okay. I got that guy's soda. Let's get this, ancients. I hope you well. I hope you shook the soda and throw it in no, his face. Not. What the? F- Why would I do that? I don't want to get fired. I mean, I think. Okay, that's I mean, that's what that's well. what I get for trying to do a joke. <laughs> okay. Avery sorry. in the back as you're leaving, it kind of fiddles with his fingers a bit as he goes over to his cats and uh, you can't see it but he's smiling a little bit behind the scarf Aww. Aww, Avery Mr. Arlen you're, you're so good. you guys are looking for Gruff uh, fortunately for you as soon as you exit you run directly into Sam and Max with Gruff behind them can I Spooky just Torres is gonna Spooky make sure just the storage watches. room door is closed. Oh, well, it looks like you guys found the source before I did. No, uh... no, he didn't. What? Sam squints at that. <laughs> Gruff, right? Gruff, Gruff's behind them, like, hey, y'all, y'all find anything in there? Yeah. No. Um. Uh, we need to talk. Actually, wait. Yeah, we got. We need to talk about something. Uh, 
Well, go ahead and shoot. I'm an open book, pals. I don't think you've been as open as you say. Oh. What the fuck? What am I doing huh. to earn that? Huh. So about the storage room. I mean, not the storage room. The, the janitor's the, closet. The janitor's closet. Where? What am I about it? So, um, hey, which one of us is saying it? You took something from that closet, didn't you? Uh, I mean, it depends. Pick your words carefully. I don't yeah, like work. your tone. Oh, That's real rude of you. I, I, I mean, I was hired to be a, a janitor a little bit ago. I, I go in that closet all the time to help clean it around whenever I'm here. Uh, I take I take uh, boxes of cleaning supplies to and from storage. I take uh, I take some of the cleaning like tools around, move them between the closets when they're needed. Wait a I'd, I'd, um, uh, <sighs> you threw away the brain, didn't you? What? Why what? on earth would I throw away the brain? I ain't even seen the brain. Why are y'all saying I've seen the brain? Actually, Baylor kind of thinks I mean... for a moment. He's like, did did you see a particularly large? Thing of gum? No. All right, never mind. Ah, I, I know better than to mess with big wads of gum. I ain't look. Agent Tethers has got some nasty shit going on. I ain't getting involved in. Uh, that. That. That sounds absolutely disgusting. Anyway. So, yeah. Hmm. So then, look, look, why on earth are you? What is going on? And Sam kind of has his hands on his hips and he's like, You know, I'd kind of like to know the answer to that too. He now, tracked the lead with the cat here. Apparently, someone saw you in the closet right after they saw. Uh, the janitor with the missing brain. Yeah. Huh. So, well, wait, I never saw no brain in there. Um, how do we, how do we know if they're telling the truth? Empathy. That spooky is immediately I'm just, just I'm going to right. empathy. Wouldn't see. just. Hmm. Uh -huh. So Spooky and Pascal, you can tell that Gruff is telling the truth. They haven't seen the brain. Okay, He's they fine. haven't seen the brain. And if the other guy... You were the... Hmm. Hmm. I mean... Okay. Who could have... Okay. Did you see anybody else around then? Maybe leaving? No, I didn't. I... All okay. I'll go over what I did by that closet. Just I'll retrace my steps, all professional and like. So, I, uh, I went to that closet and uh, I opened it. Uh, I saw Weber wasn't there doing anything, so I was like, I guess it's my turn for the cleanings. Uh. I don't know if this was before or after Weber lost the ha their their brain. Um, I guess if I noticed cat hair, that would tell us. But I, I, I gotta, I gotta think. And now it's time for me to do another roll to see if uh, to see if they do remember seeing cat hair. They think and they think and they're like, I think there was hair there. Yes, yeah, so this will be after the lost the brain. Um. 
so I went in there to do cleaning and I saw a couple of boxes that needed to be moved. Uh, so I, I got one of those little trolleys we use to move the boxes, like cleaning supplies around. Uh, it, I got it and then I, I took that trolley to, oh, where did I take that trolley to? I took it to one of the offices because that office's janitor closet needed to be restocked uh, if I remembered right. And I did remember right because when I went there it was empty. So I put the boxes in there. Uh, to do some cleaning mm. at the end of the work day in that office. And that's okay. about all I did with this closet today until we ran over to find that cat hair and do this investigation. Wait, all right, so well, you need to take us we to have those to get boxes. the trolley. Those, that, that, yeah, you do. <laughs> you do. Oh, um, <laughs> well, take okay. Us to those boxes, please. Yes, we need sure. to see what Torah is talking. Yes. All right, all right. Let's, uh, let's them go. And uh, Gruff once again leads the way. This time, Sam and Max are following up the rear, and Max is like, wow, intrigue! Indeed. So, uh, you guys do follow Gruff until you're led into, like, the office room, too. Uh, it's adjacent to the other office room that has, it has a bunch of like desks, cubicles, stuff like that for people who need to do the boring psychonauts office work side of things. Uh, there's a closet at the far end, and Gruff goes over to it, opens it, and uh, well, shoot, shoot, boxes are gone. Oh my god! Uh, who comes in here gone. normally then? Wait, who comes in here ages normally? Sixty years. Torres, Torres, stop aging. We need to figure this out before you die. Torres ages into a raisin. <laughs> like, Torres, no. if we figure out who's supposed to be in here, we, then we can narrow it down again. Whose office is this? Well, Whose this is an office is? for a bunch of people. There's all these desks yeah. here and all that fun stuff. And let's and check I, names. Did you drop the boxes to any specific desk? No, no, no. I brought him straight to this closet and left him in. If someone came in and took him, it's because they came in and took him. Then we have to find them. Let's check All for right, names. So All right, let's Kaboom look for names, in, Kaboom is investigating. Uh, you look around, you look around. You see a few different nameplates. Uh, this office hosts... Agent Oleander, Lobato, Tethers. You see that there's actually a desk getting made for a habit right next to FK. It says uh, on his desk, uh, agent in training, but... Uh, uh, those are some of the nameplates. Uh, Torres, while you're investigating, you decide to be a little bit nosier and actually look at what's on some of the desks instead of some of the nameplates. Uh, wow. you take a look at some of the notes that are on some of the desks, because some of them do have notes. Lobato's notepad that's on his desk is just full of really silly doodles of teeth uh, and smiles, and there's a little doodle of him in habit hugging, which is kind of cute in a weird way. Also a little drawing of, uh, of Oleander with his arms crossed, looking very angry. And it says on top, little Oli. Uh, so he just doodles in his spare time, it seems, instead of doing any actual work. Oleander's desk uh, has, a, like, on display, because they have, like, little cubicle walls to, like, put stuff on, to. There's, like, a vinyl record of some boy band leaning up on there. And then there's... A bunch of like file folders and like legitimate psychonauts work being done on his desk. Uh, Agent Tethers has uh, some various Rubik's cubes, cubes being used lightly because the shapes all vary laid out uh, on his desk. Uh, all solved, all of them solved perfectly, of course. Uh, he has most upsettingly. Uh, he has a bowl of unopened gum, which is the good part. The bad part is there is a glass case with an already chewed gum waiting to be rechewed. Of course, 
horrible, ugly goblin man, why do you do this? But there's also an open notepad on Tether's desks that says, uh, to do cleaning the upper offices. Oh no. I love how this is just a complete train of we gotta find this thing. Oh no, that's I this think thing. Agent Tethers moved the boxes. Oh no. We need to go find Agent Tethers. So are we going? I'm so, so where are we going? going? We're, we need to go find Agent Tethers. Okay, to Tethers. Wow, he is. I can't believe the guy who called for this crime to be solved was the criminal all along. Let's no, this go, was all Sam. an accident. This was all an accident. We just need to find the oh, box. No. This is everybody get the gun from the rabbit. He's gonna do something. That'd be pretty funny if he was the reason this. Ha, is jokes on you. My gun's I know I haven't really away. been stressing. I know I haven't Dang. really been stressing the need that we like hurry. But an unjarred brain is a dehydrated brain, and that is not good. This is very much an emergency. We need to go. Oh, Torres, we we'll get it. Don't that worry. actually raises some interesting questions. I mean. The person this brain belonged to is already dead, right? There should be no body fluids to keep that brain from dehydrating in the first place. It could still prove dangerous if it's just left out Oh, of though. course, but I'm just saying, it's pretty interesting. It should have dehydrated long ago. Okay, can we please go? Yeah, we should probably start running. I don't running. want to think about, like... Uh, psychic brains have... Brains. If the brain has enough of a psychic potency, it probably develops some sort of shield around itself to prevent itself from dehydrating. Yeah. We should probably actually start moving, though. Yep, so you guys start running down the hall, uh, looking around. You guys have no idea where Agent Tethers is. However, if you would like to run into anyone else who might know, roll me an intelligence or a finesse to investigate. Okay. Haha. <laughs> Finesse. Oh, come on, spooky. <laughs> I've been getting it too easy. Dorky, you stole my success. No, I didn't. <laughs> I feel like spooky would be focusing to the point where he's not focusing. So, Baylor, Kaboom, and Pascal, while you're looking around the HQ, all at once, you do notice the smoke coming from one room. Not, like, fire smoke, but cigarette smoke. And you realize, if you can't find Agent Tethers, maybe an old friend of his can. Agent Calavera is taking a smoke break in the nearby break room. Freaking Pasco is running over there. He's like speed walking. <laughs> Baylor follows. We're doing yep. this now. Follows. Uh, Agent Calavera takes a glance at you and is just like, hey, how's the investigation? Do you know where Tethers is? Oh, Nelson? Uh, he scratches his head. <laughs> his skull, rather. And, uh, Puts out a cigarette and he's like, well, he uh, should be at the upper offices, but you're not allowed to get up there without clearance. We... Let we... me guess, you need clearance. Okay. We yes. Yes. need clearance. We need clearance. All right, he hops to his feet. Time to shake out these old bones then. He stops and he looks... At Sam and Max in the doorway, and he's like, No. And Sam's like, Come on, I would never. And Manny's like, Buddy, I know what you want to try. Out of the doorway. And Sam kind of whines a bit as he steps away to let Manny step out of the room. And Manny's keeping a close eye on Sam. No, what do you want to do? It's nothing. It's very unprofessional, and I would never do it in a workplace environment. He's just paranoid. What is it, though? Pascal squints. What is it? I want to know. It's embarrassing, and I'd rather not talk. And Max pops up, and he's like, He wants to take a bite out of those bones like the old hound dog he is! 
All right, can we please go? <laughs> oh, that's wholesome and funny. Yeah, haha, very wholesome, very funny, except when it's ripping my arm off. Yeah, that's when it's not. Can we please go? Can we please go? Yeah, can yeah, come on. And he's walking yeah, off to an elevator and he's like, uh, I don't know if this is going to fit everyone in one go. Ha. Huh. Hmm. He looks Don't at the wait. nearby stairs and he's like, uh, I'll just take the fucking stairs. I can take the stairs. Don't worry. I'll be up there before you know it. I can fly. Hopefully. Gruff, uh, Gruff offers, like, Gruff looks at you and is like, I can carry a few years up there. I'm a freelance bodybuilder. Uh, thanks, I got but no thanks. Muscle. That's cute. <laughs> So wait, yeah. the elevator is broken? It it works, but it's not going to carry everyone because there's a bunch of people here. You know, I don't mind actually just going up the stairs. It's fine. All righty then. And then Gruff scoops you up in their arms. <laughs> Spooky okay. just wants to try levitating up the steps again. All right. So uh, I'm going to say that you use an act, but you don't have to roll extent for just levitating up the stairs. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, Gruff carries Pascal, you levitate up the stairs, and the uh, Baylor follows dejectedly behind like they're taking the stairs, and then everyone else hops into the elevator to get to the upper offices. Should I roll, like, speed or something? Or Nah, you're just taking the stairs. It's just, it's just sucking the life out of you because you gotta climb. Baylor, we've got is finally this. aging. <laughs> Baylor, you've got this. I believe in you. Shut up. I'm just thinking of the scene from. Oh, Alex okay. I see how it is. So, uh, you guys make it up to the door to the upper offices, and Manny holds up a key card to a card reader, and the door opens, and he's like, Oi, Nelson. And he's looking around, and, uh, you don't see Nelson, but who you do see is someone I didn't make art for, forgive me. I didn't have the time. But you see an agent with wavy blonde hair and a blonde goatee, and he has a hook for a hand. And he looks at you and he's like, hey, Manny! And... Manny blinks like that white man blinking gif, only a skeleton, and he's like, oh, Threepwood. And uh, the guy walks over and he's like, hey, one of my favorite agents. I just stopped by to say hi and to get involved in the secret business, you know. And it's like, yes, the secret business that you shouldn't be talking about in the open, of course. Right, right. Secret. Secret business. Secret. Secret business. Hello. Is that... Well, you know, if you're in the upper offices, I'm sure you're allowed to hear about it. So, and then uh, Manny clamps a hand over Agent Threepwood's uh, uh, mouth like, no. Oh. Uh, We're just here looking for Agent Tethers. Ah, uh, Nelson! Nelly, my boy, my buddy, my best pal. He's uh, over in those offices. He said something about cleaning. And the second... Threepwood says that you guys hear a scream from the offices and Nelson runs into the room and shuts the door hey. behind him and he's like, oh god, I've made a mistake. What did you do? Oh god, what did you do? I found the brain. Where's the brain? Oh, oh no, wait. What? Okay, give us the brain then. It's a... He opens the door and runs in and pulls. He brings out the box and holds it out. And yep, the brain's in there. Spooky will take the box. Oh, thank like, God. Yeah, you don't have to carry it. I. How? Why? Why was the... How? This, listen, this was all just a really, Big really horrible mistake. accident. The, wh I caused a panic for nothing. It was lost in a box. It's I mean, okay. It uh, it. An agent forgot to wash their clothes before coming to the office. Apparently, someone must have had some cat hair on their coat. Janitor yeah. sneezed, yeah, and the brain away. came out. Mm-hmm. 
wait, he's dead. How does he still have allergies? And then uh, Manny pipes in like, I'm dead and I still smoke. I mean, we can ask him after after we put the brain back. Right, right. We have to get we have to get him recranialized as as fast as possible. I don't know how long the shield on his brain is going to last. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to take him down to, to I'm going to take him down to the offices. Um, shit. Wait, who do we have in charge of recranialization at this HQ again? And three uh, chimes in like uh-huh. last I checked, Lobato. Oh, really? <laughs> can I can I join Lobato's cool? No one's allowed in during the very delicate process of recranialization. I'm just gonna um, go bring this to Agent Lobato. Okay. Yeah, I. I case is, I'm so <laughs> sorry that I gave all these. I gave all the agents the run around with this, but you guys seem like you actually figured it all out and worked real hard. And I'll. Uh, and he looks around and he sets the box down and he runs over to uh grab from like one of the desks like this is a this is a company owned checkbook i can write a check with this i'll you'll get hazard pay for this i guess or something i can, <laughs> can oh, i nice. can i say spooky looks into the box just like hello mr janitor the brain does not reply but you feel a deep rage emanating from the brain <laughs> Oh, he does not. Oh, he does not like me. Sorry. I don't think he likes anyone from what I've heard. I mean, um, and Nelson glances inside the box and says, I'm so sorry. I, um. Just okay. put him back in his body. I'm going to put him back. Okay. And Nelson runs off uh, and Manny's like, he didn't finish writing the check. I'll do it. Manny goes over to start writing some extra pay for y'all for doing this much work and <laughs> it leading to this. He's very apologetic. He's just like, yeah, I'm Christ, of course. And uh, he hands you all some checks. Each one is like a solid like 350. It's small, but it's extra pay, so hee-haw. This is God. I can get so many French fries. With Actually, this. wait. What cur- three fifty and what currency? What currency does Psychonauts use? Psycho dollars. This is USD, but also an alternate Earth. So, like, imagine how video game currency can go into like the millions, and it'll still like a million pays for like a bike. <laughs> so, like, this is like this is a pretty decent amount of money, but it's like it's nothing to like sneeze at, but it's also like not going to destroy the the psychonauts. Like thirty five dollars. I was gonna say they didn't just give us like three hundred and fifty arrowheads, did they? No, three hundred fifty dollars each. Okay, okay. Can't get, can't arrowheads get so is only a currency at the uh, the camps, and even then, it's only a current. It's it's only a, a currency at Whispering Rock. Because Whispering Rock has the Citanium, uh, but other other camps, because there's more than just Whispering Rock, other camps have their own little camp currencies. Uh, I think one of them maybe even uses something like bottle caps. Shh, wink, wink. Okay, so <laughs> you guys get your extra pay, and Manny kind of waves you off, and uh, Agent Threepwood actually uh, stops you like, Hey, hold on, you guys are like, uh... yeah, yeah. Uh, Nelson mentioned that you guys did that, uh, that case with the, 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 the habitat, right? Yep. That uh-huh. Us, uh-huh. Uh, spook, spooky wasn't there. Oh. Yeah, I, I, I was doing, I was helping my fish at the time. <laughs> oh, well, uh, good work on that case. It's not pretty crazy. Uh, I figure I should start getting acquainted with some of the people here since I'm going to be visiting here and there now that, uh. And Manny gives him a look, and he shuts up. <laughs> oh. I'm Senior Agent Guybrush Threepwood, and he offers his non-hook hand to shake. Spooky shakes his hand. It's like, I am the spookiest creature known to man. Nice to meet you. Well, that's a mouthful of a name. Can I call you Spooks? Spooky is perfect. Spooky. Nice. Spooky. And he grins. Also goes over to Shake's hand. 
My name is Pascal Vaco. <laughs> well, Mr. Vaco, it's an honor. And he gives a little dramatic bow as he shakes the hand. <laughs> oh, no need for that. Anyway, actually, he gives him his card as he's shaken. <laughs> Ooh, what's as this? He stops shaking. As he stops shaking, there's a card in people's hand. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> ah, sleight of hand. And he glances at the card and he's like, Ooh, I should take Nelson or... Oh, wow. He looks a little sad. He's like, I was going to say I should bring my wife, but she's back at the other base. He looks a little sad. Maybe maybe you can bring your wife at some point if she ever comes here. I hope she stops by, but she's got some other big case back at the California base. and oh. I hope she has a good time with it. Yeah, I do too. She said she's going to keep in touch. I've already gotten a few messages. <laughs> He looks a little bashful just talking about his wife. Cute. <laughs> anyway, it's nice to meet you all. I'll be seeing you around. If you ever want a cool story or anything like that, I can provide. And he stops when he sees Sam and Max and goes, Hey, it's like a whole reunion. And he goes over and throws his arms around Sam. <laughs> and he's like, How you doing, big guy? Yeah, and Sam and Max and I'm like that. Guybrush are all having a little reunion in the corner while well, you guys are now left with a job well done. Man, I hope I hope all of us end up like that one day. No. <laughs> no. Ah. Uh, well, I knew you'd say no. You're crushing Spooky's dreams here, Pascal. <laughs> oh no, he was saying that on Baylor. <laughs> oh, Baylor. It's like, yeah, I knew you'd say no. Oh my god. Baylor shrugs. You guys no fun. spend the rest of the day, you wait until closing time, all that stuff, but uh, many hours pass, you kill time until you're allowed to head off to sleep or leave or anything you want to do. Sorry, I have hiccups. And, uh, you guys, as it gets later, uh, like a good few hours later, you hear a commotion uh, in the form of stomping through the halls, just like, I cannot believe, I know, I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Agent Tethers! And it's like, listen, I, I had a perfectly logical reason to panic about this kind of thing. I don't care about you making other people panic. I care about the fact that you lugged my brain around. And you guys could all see Weber, the janitor, stomping and giving Nelson the business. Uh, <laughs> as his brain is b back, he's recranialized and he is fucking pissed. Torres looks away. Pascal was listening to laughs. music with his, in his hair headphones. He had, like, heard it took out one head one headphone to listen, laughed a little, and then went back to listening to whatever the heck he's listening to. The sound of this rage lets you know that Weber is back, and you kind of forget why anyone ever missed him, but, you know. I missed him. <laughs> he hasn't missed me, but I miss him. Yeah. With that, you know for a fact you truly did find the right brain, he's back, everything's good, and, uh, he actually look stops by. Uh, I'm gonna assume that Torres probably went back to work on the Baba case. Like, I need to de-stress. It's time for Baba. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he looks over into the office and sees Torres and points and is like, "You." What? Weber storms in and is like, "You're one of those guys who helped find my brain, right?" Uh, yeah. Thank fucking Christ someone in this goddamn headquarters has something on their shoulders. I was about to call you or everyone else as brainless as I was, but you actually aren't bad. So, uh, thanks, I guess, for finding my brain. Uh, good God. Good God. Here. And he, like, pulls out, uh, he pulls out a candy bar and offers it. Oh, uh, Thanks. He yeah. Gets the candy bar. I know the perfect way to get snacks from the vending machines for free. I hit them just right. So, uh. That. There you go. Mm. And he turns and walks off, having given you a gift in return for helping his brain get back. 
What kind of candy bar is it? Snickers. Oh. Is that you? Or your Taurus just kind of tucks it into his desk for later. Hell yeah. And it's would probably anyone, never going to be touched again. Would anyone like closing scenes? I can't think of anything Spooky would do. So mm, I, okay. he just exists. I have an idea for a closing scene for Pascal, if that would be the final one, though. So yes. would anyone else like one first? Um, this isn't... I, I don't think this is a full scene, but this is just something I know Baylor would do after this event um at some point uh baylor would leave a small care package in the room with the cats with you know little yeah. food for them and some blankets when that he would have made himself when avery eventually f sees that package uh whenever it gets given he looks very happy uh, after a little bit of apprehension and he of course spreads the spreads the gift to his many babies uh y'all don't see this this is just avery and his cats but from behind one of the big piles of boxes that conceals their little home you can see seven cats all being treated by avery as he hides away with them. Now, Pascal, it's leaving time, and you are going off to your club when you are tapped on the shoulder. And when you look around, you see three people. Well, actually four. You see Gruff, Habit, Lobato, and Oleander. Oh, hey. Y'all coming over for the party? Yes, yes, I would like to uh to do the cool dancing. I have not I have not danced in a long time. <laughs> yeah, I I wanted to show off my tango, but then they told me this is probably like a cool hip beat club, so I get to break dance. Well, you know what? Honestly, he is also willing to take requests for stuff, too. So, if anything, it could kind of be anything tonight. <laughs> I can tango! Yeah! I need to get <laughs> a rose between my teeth. And uh, Oleander and Lobato look proper pleased. They have a bag, and uh, when as if asked what's inside, you would peek in and see that it's, like, disco clothes. They're ready to party. Oh, <laughs> yeah! Oh, Pascal's so happy. <laughs> they're like, let's get this show on the road. Yeah! All right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> that you lead the agents who wanted to go party off to the club with you. And that is the end of the session. <laughs> Hell yeah! Yay! <laughs>